Hello, I'm Dave Abrams. And I'm Kristen Lagana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. In this episode, we'll sit down with County Executive Steve Shu and highlight a cold case that has police in hot pursuit, but first making headlines this week. We have just about two months left of snow season, Dave. Just two months. It's going to snow again. I can feel it. It is. It is. I'm excited about it. It's and good. the county is making sure that everyone learns from the record snowfall of Snowzilla. This week, officials from all departments gathered for a hot wash to talk about strengths and weaknesses of the response. Just to give you an idea of the resources it took to respond, we're talking about 288 people, 6,000 tons of salt, and 118 calls that use National Guard Humvees. Some of the things staff wanted to improve for the next major weather event are updating notification lists to improve communication, coordinating with local hospitals about transporting doctors, nurses, and support staff to work, and briefing call center staff when mass recorded messages go out to citizens. Great job again by everyone who worked the storm, and that is a lot of salt. And what is a hot wash? A hot wash. The 6,000 tons is of salt? Is a hot wash like when you take your car to the car wash and it's really cold outside? I guess. Do they use hot water? A hot wash. But 6,000 tons name. of salt, Dave. That's, That's a lot, a lot of, of margaritas. That is a lot. That is a lot of margaritas. Good idea. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was. Um, I, I got a chance to sit through the. Um, I'm going to call it the after action meeting because hot wash. I just. I don't know. The post hot wash. To, I sat through the hot wash. I did not feel hot or washed afterward. Okay. But um, but it was good. It was an opportunity for everybody to sit in the same room and kind of exchange notes about what happened. It's important. And yeah, it, you know, if you don't do that, then you may not capture. You know, you, you tend to forget. You know, when your last historic snowstorm was in 2010, I believe. Right. You know, and and now here we are six years later. Um, I remember the police chief made the comment that it was like. We, you, you couldn't remember the things that you learned from the one six years ago because it was so long ago. Right. So this helps you kind of go over it and memorialize it. We have it all on video. We have it written down so everybody can you know work on those things. And later when it happens, they can pull out these materials and learn from that and try and do a better job, even though they, I think they did a really good they Good did, job. and after talking with Chris Phipps last week, we learned about some of the technological advances that they were using in DPW with the snow. So it's, it's good that everyone gets together and talks about that, Absolutely. shares that information. Absolutely. Well, do you know someone who has a disability but might have a real talent for art? The Anne Arundel County Commission on Disability Issues is now accepting entries for its annual Artists Without Limits Showcase. There's so much talent out there, and every year the county displays the artwork in the lobby of the Arundel Center in Annapolis. The smiles on these fit kids' faces are priceless, Kristen. Oh, I bet, yeah. And the deadline for submissions is March 4th. You can submit up to three entries, and the artwork has to be smaller than two feet by two feet. That's two feet by two feet. To find out more, go to aacounty.org and type Artists Without Limits in the search bar at the top right-hand corner of the page. This sounds like a great contest. Are you a, can you paint things? Can you draw? I am not very artistic. I guess I got more of the um, performing arts side of that gene, but right. I've always appreciated folks that can paint, uh, that can do sculpture work. I Me think too. it's phenomenal. Me so. too. So I, I can't sing like you can. <laughs> I can play guitar can play a little guitar. better than you. I can't draw worth a lick. I'm okay with like sketching, but mm -hmm. I I have friends that paint and it's amazing when yeah. they do like a real life portrait of their pet or if they do something of their of, of a friend or mm -hmm. folks that do sculpture work, it's insane. And I, I dabble in 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 um, graphic design and I mm -hmm. love how how much you can do now with computers where you know it will help you look like you're well, super artistic. Graphic art is a, a I enjoy that form of art. So right, absolutely. even commercial logos and things like that that I do can be kind of artistic, right? You are artistic, Dave. You Thanks. are so artsy. <laughs> well, the Anne Arundel County School Board has two new members. Governor Larry Hogan appointed the new members this week to sit on the nine-member board. Gilliland is a former Maryland State Delegate and once served as a student member of the board. He lives in Glen Burnie with his wife Emily and their two-month-old daughter Michelle. He also works at an education company, lectures at two community colleges, and runs his own consulting company. Sasso is a former teacher who founded her own company called MTM Sasso Corporation. She has held leadership roles in Hispanic and women-owned businesses. An interesting tidbit, she was born in Jamaica and grew up in Puerto Rico. Nice Love combination. Puerto Rico. Been to Puerto Rico, it's gorgeous. Here's what Sasso said about serving on the school board. I'm very passionate about what I do, but it doesn't mean that I'm right. You know, and I will be very <coughs> passionate unless somebody comes to me and says, Maria, you know, look at this other point of view. But I figured, you know, 
I, I have experience, I have worked both areas, so I will charge. Congratulations to the two new members of the board, and we know that we'll work hard for the students in our public schools. And I gotta say, you know, congratulations to my friend Terry Gilliland, who I've known for many, many years now, and um, I know he knows a lot about the subject matter, and he knows how the process works, and I think he's gonna be a really good member of the board, and uh, the same for Maria Sasso, so we look forward to getting to know them, and maybe we'll have them on the show sometime soon. Sounds good to me, we can review shout outs. There we go. Well, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we return, we will talk to County Executive Steve Shu. Take a look at our community calendar for events happening around town, and we'll be right back. Wow, these are really good. You act surprised. Practice makes perfect. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection, they need you. Well, welcome back. We like to periodically update you by talking with our county executive, Steve Shu. Thank you for joining us again on the show. Thank you for having me. Very good. Let's let's get the the first thing out of the way here, which is uh, we were happy to show on on our program last week you doing the polar bear plunge. Oh yeah, <laughs> I know you do it every year. Now yeah. you you chose to do some body paint this year. Yeah, whose idea was yeah, the body paint? This, this year we kind of stepped out, stepped out of our comfort zone and, and <laughs> did the body paint, but I, I hedged my bets. I had navy on the front and Army in the back. Right. So uh, for the United States Naval Academy and for our wonderful Army base mm -hmm. out at Fort Meade. And uh, it was cold. It was yeah. really, it was very cold. Really cold. But you missed that snow, luckily, so. We missed the snow. There were, yeah. a little, there were some snow flurries before jumping in, but uh, they'd stopped. And yeah. the, sun, the sun was poking out a little bit, but it was really much colder than last year. Now, and, and now, every time I ask you about this, you say, you know, it wasn't that bad. But I'm told that when you hit that, whatever part of your body hits that water, it instantly kind of burns. And then when you go under, yeah. it shut, everything shuts down because it's so cold. That's about right. Okay. That's about right. Now, last year, I, I, my recollection of it was that the water was actually a little warmer feeling uh -huh. than, the, than the air, the uh -huh. ambient air. But... This year, not so much. This year, when I got in that water, it was like sticking your hand in a nice cold bucket, and it was really, really cold. But I kept telling myself it's a really good cause, and it is. I was, is. I was out on Friday, mm -hmm. which is uh, Public Safety and U.S. Military Recognition Day. The, the official polar bear plunges on Saturday that benefits right. the Special Same Olympics. location, though, on Same Friday. location, same sort of event. Uh, both events do benefit the Special Olympics, but Friday is all about uh, police, fire, sheriff, state's attorney, pro and probation, detention, uh, as well as all branches of the United States Armed Forces. So it's a, a, a large number of public safety and military personnel. They come out uh, in mass to support the Special Olympics, and it's a lot, a lot of fun. It's really great. Now, was it your idea to do the body paint, or was this something something someone it's suggested? It's one of those things. I I came out with the idea, and then I wish I could have pulled it back. <laughs> so you're not going to be doing but, this next year? Uh, not likely. <laughs> Participating, <laughs> not painting. The coldness. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. You never know. We'll see. I'm sure we'll you see. got a good amount of chuckles that day. It got a little a lot attention. Of attention. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun. It added, added to the fun, but it added to the cold. Well, you were a good sport. We appreciate it. And people enjoyed it. it. Yeah. Um, so tell, let's, talk, let's talk about work a little bit. 
Um, last week, you made an announcement about some fee reductions. Um, can yes. you tell us about that and how that fits into your larger program of what you want to do in office? Well, you, you are very aware of our five-point plan, the first component of which is reducing taxes and fees on Anne Arundel County citizens to make it easier to live and work here and to create jobs here. Uh, last year, we were successful in enacting the largest tax cut in, in county history. This year, we've been focusing our attention on fees. And uh, about two weeks ago, the county council approved our proposal to reduce uh, the fees associated with connecting to public water and sewer. Right. Those fees are enormous in this county, among the largest such fees in the United States. And the fee cut we enacted is, uh, in the aggregate, $125 million over the next three years that we will be pumping directly into the economy and creating jobs and economic activity. So I am, I am really excited about that. I actually believe it's the most significant achievement of our administration so far. But it's only just the beginning as far as fees go. We're, we're now halfway through the process of evaluating, evaluating the hundreds of fees in Anne Arundel County. Uh, we are rationalizing them, sorting them out. We're going to be rebasing some, eliminating others entirely. And last week, we did announce uh, the elimination of the spay-neuter fee mm -hmm. entirely. We want to encourage people to spay and neuter their, their pets, and we don't want a fee standing in the way of that important practice. Uh, we reduced the fees for the uh, senior, senior, uh, plus. senior Plus program mm -hmm. at our senior centers to make it easier for seniors to participate in those programs, and they're really very important. Uh, and other fees as well. So we, we're, we're just in the middle of this overall process, but so far so good. We've found a lot of fees to reduce and eliminate. And you know what? Most of them are just nuisances. Mm -hmm. They're not even large enough to have an impact on the financial uh, results and, and sustainability of the county. They're just, okay. they're nickel and dime fees. And we're just, we're just getting out of the business of nickel and diming the citizens of the county. That's what we're trying to do. I think that's an audit we can all get behind. Yeah, and, yeah. and you know, that's, I was going to ask you about that because whenever, whenever you cut a fee or a tax, which you've been doing, you get this response from folks that says, well, what are you, what are we sacrificing for that? And um, it's important to know that when you're looking at, when you're reviewing these fees, you're looking at, well, is the fee paying for the service? Um, exactly. What is the utility of the fee? So um, on these particular ones, you made a judgment that it wasn't covering the cost. And so if it's not covering the cost, why are we charging? Why it? have it? Yeah. Exactly. And um, it, it's important that, that fees uh, cover all or a material portion of the program that they are supposed to be paying for, but no more. Mm -hmm. What we don't want to have is situations where we're overcharging people, which is exactly what we were doing with water and sewer hookup fees. Oh, uh, okay. We were charging more than was necessary, and that's not appropriate. Fees should not be a source of general revenue to a government. Mm -hmm. They should only support their specific programs, and we have instances where that's not the case, and we're going to fix it. Very good. Well, another hot topic that you've had on your plate has been Crofton High School. So yes. what can you tell us the latest on that? Very exciting. As, as I think you both know, Anne Arundel County has not constructed an incrementally new high school in Anne Arundel, in the county since 1982, which is why the schools have spiraled ever upward in terms of, of total student population. And we now have among the largest high schools in the United States. And what does incremental mean? Well, we've replaced schools. For example, oh, okay. we've replaced, we're replacing Severna Adding Park. Adding a new school. We haven't added any more than the 12 we've always had. We've okay. had 12 schools since 1982. We've replaced some along the way, but we've never added that 13th, 14th, or 15th high school. Well, the good news is that we have now added to our long-range plan, not one, two, but three new high schools mm -hmm. over the next 10 years. They will be smaller neighborhood high schools, which I think is important because smaller neighborhood schools are the places where students learn best. And the first of those three schools will be Crofton. And we, were, we will be uh, entering the planning phases this summer. Uh, very excited about the project. It's going to be uh, a game changer for the West County community, not just Crofton because, and for South County because half the kids from Crofton now go to South River and are overcrowding South River. Those kids will all come back to Crofton.
The other half of the, of the Crofton community goes to Arundel, mm -hmm. overcrowding Arundel. Those kids will stay in Crofton. So both, so three all birds three with schools. one stone. And there may be even collateral effects beyond those three schools. We may, be, we may see some people from Old, Old Mill, Mill, you know, redistricted, who knows, to, uh, to, to make these schools all balance out in terms of population. But the net effect is going to be a significant reduction in the overall size of all of those schools. And research proves that the smaller size a school is, the better the academic outcomes and the more after school opportunities each child has. Because whether it's a 2,000 person school or a 1,000 person school, there's still only one marching band, there's still only one football team. It's just when schools get really large, there's that many more kids going home uh, with nothing to do because they get cut. It makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. The extracurricular opportunities, the student to teacher attention ratio. Right. right. But also with uh, the nightmare that has become transportation. South River graduate, by the way, right That's here. That's right. Go oh, Seahawks. Um, but with the <laughs> bus routes, I mean, just wreaking a lot of uh, havoc on the roads back and forth, um, we'll have some improvements there as well because right, right now you're busing those kids in and they're having a ridiculous commute. So a long day for the kids. Yeah. And I think just to update people because we've been trying to keep them apprised as every step along along the way, uh, you, you presented before the Board of Public Works to, for funding for the school. Right. And you also uh, forward funded aspects of that. Um, tell us a little bit about how that works. Well, construction of, of schools in Maryland is a joint county and state responsibility. Right. The county pays for about 60% of the cost of building a new school and the state pays for about 40%. So every year, we need to go before the state, present our plan, and get their uh, approval to participate up to the tune of their 40%. And that was the event at the Department of Public Works that you're talking about. That went well. I think the uh, governor, the controller, and the treasurer, uh, which are the members of, of the Board of Public Works, are supportive of what we're doing in this county. So I think the state will be there for us. And uh, the next step is, uh, is, is planning, planning and design. And uh, we'll be doing that in earnest this, uh, this summer. Great. Awesome. <laughs> well, so not, as, not quite as exciting as uh, Crofton High School. But Which, by the way, did we ever figure out who the mascot's going to be? Well, I think we, we said Cardinal, Cardinals. right? Or Crofton Cardinal Cardinals. or Cardinal. That's the traditional. Yeah. I, I personally want it to be Crofton Kraken. Yeah, no one's going to do Kraken, that. The Kraken, like I'm the sorry. big monster. No. I'm not sure that's going to cut yeah. it, Dave. I yeah. think it's kind of cool. With him. <laughs> Which one did you have? I said Cardinal. Oh, no, I said Crows. I just said crows. a bird. Crows. So that was the crows. first, first bird well, I thought of. Cardinals is an old name for Crofton teams. That's been um, around a long time. So yeah. that might that's make probably it. Gonna, There'll yeah. probably be a contest. Maybe, maybe you guys ought to have a contest. We should enter. We love contests. No Kraken, though. We're, we're <laughs> well, anyway, as I said, not as exciting as Crofton High School and what to name the mascot. But, but very important is this reform effort when it comes to procurement in the county. Um, that's the next big thing you're taking on. Tell us yes. a little bit about that issue and, well, and how we're going to attack it. This is part of our overall government reform effort. And there's nothing sexy about government reform or reorganizing bureaucracies, but it's really, really important because mm -hmm. the county spends vast amounts of money uh, procuring or buying goods and services. Actually, we spent last year about $360 million buying various goods and services. It's imperative that that process be efficient and uh, respectful of taxpayer dollars, but right now it's not. It's very inefficient, very slow, very backward. There's no technology. Uh, we just completed a major consulting study that suggests that we are leaving 18 to $20 million on the table each and every year. Hmm. $20 million going down the tubes because of inefficiencies in our in our purchasing practices. So we are going after that really hard. And the other is permitting. We just completed the other study, and uh, that study showed what I've believed for some time, which is that we have the potential through reform to reduce permitting times in half. And oh, wow. everybody knows in business that time is money. If you can sure. reduce your permitting times from two years to one year, that's a game changer for, for new home construction, for projects, for rehabilitating old homes, 
uh, building a deck, whatever you're trying to do. Getting the business open and the That's jobs right. going. Get the business yeah. open, get the people employed, get business happening, and help grow our economy. So everybody wins through permit reform and accelerating the permit process. So I'm very excited about it. Maybe I'm the only one, but I think it's- I really, think there's a lot of ears out there important. that want to hear that. <laughs> I think it's really important. It's really, it's one of those very important, but behind the scenes things that we're working on that will make a big difference in the long run for this county. One of the things I've seen, one of the little anecdotes that I, I tell about what you're talking about is this, this process we have of, it's like a red weld, which is like a lawyer's uh, folder and it has this sign, signing sheet on it that's stapled on it. Right. And it has to get all these signatures and it's hand carried right. from this office to that office to this office right. and just the process of moving the thing mm -hmm. takes forever. I mean, we have online signatures now. Exactly. We have electronic signatures. No, in, in other jurisdictions around the country, that process is automated. It's, on, it's all computerized. They're, in our county, we require applicants for permits to bring in rolls upon rolls of printed permits, big architectural, um, excuse me, architectural plans, not permits, big rolls. Yeah, and like really big That's the dark like ages. Yeah. yeah. That's the dark ages. All those plans should be submitted by computer. And all the parties that need to sign off, planning and zoning, inspections and permits, the fire department, the health department, they should all be reviewing these plans online and signing off electronically. I agree. Well, it's a, that's a lot to, to tackle, but you know, I guess we're we're in it for the long haul to try and try and take these things, take care of these things one we're at a time. We're in it for yeah, the long haul. These things will the... take a year or two, but we'll get them done. Well, as always, we appreciate you coming on and updating us as to everything that's Thank going you. on in county government. And um, we're going to take a really quick break, and we'll be right back. It's a short ride from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. Welcome back. Well, we're always learning about the amazing things technology can do to solve old murder mysteries. Anne Arundel County's finest have a new tool they hope will help, help solve a case from all the way back in 1985. Sarah Gannon has more. Sarah? Thanks, Kristen and Dave. Corporal Davis, can you tell us a little bit about the cold case? I can. Back in 1985, we had found a body in a trash can when we were building Marley Station Mall. That body was identified as an adult male. We have no further identification on him. Fast forward to 2015 and 2016, a company called Parabon Industries, what they do is they take DNA samples and they create a composite sketch. So basically they take the DNA and they, take, they find your phenotype, which is the physical characteristics that are found in your DNA, and they can make us a composite sketch out of DNA. In this case, we gave them a DNA sample from the victim's femur. We also gave them his skull. Oh, wow. So they were able to use his exact bone structure as well as his teeth when they were giving us this composite sketch. Now this is huge for us because in a homicide investigation, your first lead is going to be the victimology of your victim, his pedigree, where he comes from, who he is, who he hangs out with, what he's into. So this is huge for us. If we can get this victim identified, it can really catapult our investigation forward and hopefully get us some closure in this case. Well, thank you. If somebody has any information on the case, um, who do they contact? If anybody recognizes this person or thinks they may recognize this person, they can call our tip line. It's 410-222-4700. Um, or they can call the non-emergency number, which is 410-222-8610. Again, we're looking for any information that could help us crack this case open. So even if you're not 100% sure, if you think that this person may resemble somebody you knew, um, give us a call. It's also important to remember that this case was 1985. Um, and our victim was mid-20s then, so we're thinking he's going to be in his 50s, maybe even 60s now. So that's the age frame we're looking for. So keep that in mind, that just because he was in his mid-20s, um, when he died, he would have been older now. And it's up to the citizens, too, to help. It's very helpful. A lot of people don't realize that citizens do help the police a lot. They are our biggest asset. Absolutely. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Sarah. Now, hopefully somebody will see this sketch and remember this man from their youth. You never know. And it will not be you it won't because be you were three years old. Uh, oh, you remembered. I know. But I did just watch a case like this. We've discussed it so many times. It was so. on Blue Bloods, which I, I love that show. 
But um, one of uh. the, uh, Donnie Wahlberg's partner, she had witnessed a murder when she was young. Uh. And years later, they nabbed the guy. So, so it maybe does, you can it help. help. It does help. I want you to study that composite, and okay. I want you to solve the case. Do what okay? I can. Could you have possibly been around, you know, Marley Station Mall when you were three years old? No, but you know what? I still You were recall. down South County? No, I was down South County. I, I remember old school Annapolis Mall with all the fountains and the blue tile, and like the one restaurant there was the Chick-fil-A. <laughs> I, I still remember the way that the mall used to be. It's crazy now with the, the addition that they built on and all the new shops they have and how they've really spruced it up so fun fact about that mall as well is they as they expanded the mall there were height restrictions so they could not go up that's why the mall is so sprawling because there were they couldn't build a second story on there I like it though but yeah. I mean not to knock Towson but Towson's a very tall mall and I hate going in there I feel like I can't find anything hmm. I like a one floor mall what about that fancy mall in the inner harbor where you, it's multiple stories yeah that too I don't I don't like vertical I like it's a pretty cool sprawling mall, out though. sprawling out you don't like so. it okay no. something about Baltimore you don't like wow oh calm down wow wow <laughs> so <laughs> Super Bowl Super Bowl. Super Bowl was this past Did you Monday. like it? Um, my appetizers were a big hit. Oh, tell everyone so, what they were again. again if there. you didn't watch the show last week, in honor of this year's participating quarterbacks, I made chicken, chicken parm, parm you taste, taste so good, good. Bites. 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 And, and I also made um, homemade Cam, Cam Fig Newtons. Fig Newtons yes. yes. Um, the homemade fig Newtons were a pain in the you know where. It looked like they um, had a little. You had a little trouble. They, it was hard. I'm telling you, I am. And it's not just me. I know a lot of folks that like to bake that have a difficulty with this sort of a dish. You had to roll it into a log, like a cinnamon roll you um, would do or something like that. And then you had to flatten it so it looked flat like a Fig Newton bar. But it was transferring it to the baking tray that caused me so much trouble. Like, you should have seen me and Will in the house. We had spatulas, hands we were trying to carry. Well, like when you're, like, so here's a question for you as a baker. Okay. That's not a very good thing. Can you ever I, get a perfect slice of pie? No. How? But that's the you thing. You can't do it. And my father had the um, Fig Newtons. I brought some leftovers to my parents' house, and God bless him. Did he, did said, they taste good? He, he said he loved good? A lot of people said they liked them, and he was saying he felt like it was a healthier Fig Newton. It was natural. Hmm. So he, he appreciated my imperfections because they didn't look like your basic corporate Newton. They well, were homemade Well done, and Dad. Delicious. That's true love for your daughter yes. right there. Thanks, Daddy. What you about the chicken parm? Oh, you those were so gone good. in like 10 minutes. Okay. Those, those were, were great. great. So, so, you know, to continue the food analogy, you know, who was who was better, the, the Fig Newton or the, or the, one. the parm bites? Denver one. Okay, so you're not going to mention that person's name. What do you mean? Are you, so Peyton Manning, you're saying? Peyton was Manning better. won. He won the okay. evening, both that appetizers mean he was better. and the game. Cam Newton had a tough game, you know. He had a tough he did. game. I did not see this coming. I really didn't. I didn't see it playing out like this. But, you know, of course, in hindsight, it all becomes very simple that, you know, number one, Carolina is a young and inexperienced team. And in professional sports, that always the, – the more experienced team wins. But I thought in football – there was a little too much experience on Peyton's part, and father time catches up with you in football real fast. Yeah. But it turned out that, you know, it was about, I mean, people did not like the game, right? You did not like the game. It was just a boring game. It was all defense. The most exciting touchdown was due to an interception. But that's exciting. I, I thought it was a great game. I enjoyed the, I didn't, the I defense. I didn't think it was very exciting. And I, you want the 80-yard passes. And... I just wanted a, a game that I felt was more of a close call, you know? Okay. It just and it was a it was a close game. No, it wasn't. It was pretty close. It wasn't a blowout. Now I'll tell you, I remember a certain Super Bowl that I can tell you about that Denver played in. Mm -hmm. Denver was up ten to nothing at halftime. Lost fifty-five to ten, folks. Was that the Seahawks win? Fifty-five to ten. That was the nineteen ninety-one oh. Washington Redskins. Oh. Hello. Nailed it. I believe that's a record as well, the biggest I'm sure blowout. It is. And I'm sure it, it is. looked like it didn't look good for the Redskins. And this kid named Timmy Smith, who barely touched the ball all season, was the MVP, went wild, go. had like I'm gonna get all these all these facts. You're wrong. getting nostalgic right 200 now. Two hundred yards. Yeah. Do you need some tissues? Someday. Can we get some tissues? Someday. 
You want to talk about the Ravens and get nostalgic? Too? I don't. I don't want to. Oh, we don't need okay. to go there. Okay. You didn't have to do that, Joe Mr. Flacco. 1991. Joe Flacco. That was nice. I liked the ceremony at the beginning. I liked some of the special yeah, touches they cool. did for the 50th. Yeah. Um, I did appreciate that. A, a lot of the um, pregame coverage that they were doing. Mm -hmm. um, you enjoyed ba Gaga. Oh my gosh, Lady Gaga. You are Gaga. such a Lady Gaga fan. No, I, well I am, but I was. I was prepared just because I've been let down before for her to completely ruin the anthem because mm -hmm. so often we get a fantastic singer that goes up to do the anthem and they either overdo it or it's underwhelming mm -hmm. or off key or which is the key. worst right so or the I, I mic mean, doesn't work like the halftime show yes like most folks I get shivers up my spine when I hear the Whitney Houston so, version. So I called it that Coldplay was terrible. Wait, let me finish the anthem. But I got it wrong on Lady Gaga. Okay, so you were she wrong. Was she okay. was great. She was great. She looked was. great. She sang great. She was perfectly toned. Like there were some parts of her outfit that I think were a little. She didn't need to over the, the sparkly eyeshadow and the helmet hair. I thought it was cool. I don't know. She, kind, right. of, she kind of looked like the heat miser to me. <laughs> All right, how about best commercial? What was the best commercial? I for have you? to say, the, com the commercials were also disappointing to me this yeah. year. I felt it was a lot of television previews and um, film, uh, a lot of the movie trailers, but I, I didn't really get many. Cre there were no GoDaddy commercials. I didn't see any. There weren't because any. Cre I don't like GoDaddy commercials. Is it not a thing anymore, I guess the not. domain names? But, I don't know. Um, it, I just didn't sense that there was much creativity with doing a product. All right, but you have to pick one, so well, pick one. I will always appreciate the Doritos commercials, the okay. sonogram and the dogs trying to get into the grocery store. Um, and I really did like the weenie dog family with oh. the ketchup and the mustard. I'm a sucker for the animal dogs. commercials. You what can I say? Except for the monkey baby puppy. That was no. so so no wrong i will think about that image it was not and funny it will haunt me. well and you know they did that the, they they took that from their last commercial that was the um what was the song that was a craze that they did the the music videos to so they modeled that after the harlem shake which was a big deal of course and right. a great funny commercial and it just didn't work for this. They yeah, just, I wasn't very. They jumped the shark, so to speak. Right. I wasn't yeah. very impressed with the commercials. Um, halftime show, uh, thought it visually. Um, do I get to talk about the commercial I like? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I'm going to go with the Prius commercial. Oh, yes. Okay. The getaway. Yeah. I mean, it, well, first of all, okay. So it was, it was one of those to be continued kind of commercials. Right. And I think a lot of people missed the last one because it was after the game was over. So in the last one, just a you know spoiler alert right here, they they take the Prius into a into a body shop and they spray it as a police car. The police finally get onto it and they're like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna make our own police car. And they the police car you know catches them because it's a Prius. Mm -hmm. Now, funny commercial. Also, you may have noticed that was the Some Sabaka the Sabaka family from, from the, the Wire. wire. Uh, which is weird. It's kind of I don't know what's up with that. I have to research that more. I think because it's on why. Netflix right now and people are catching up on it, and it's just it's a really? hot show again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I didn't feel like afterward that I I didn't go. I'm gonna go buy a Prius now. Well, none of the except for the Doritos ones. <laughs> I mean, it was a cool commercial, but it didn't make me want to buy a Prius. Right. But you wanted Doritos after, didn't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Of course. So it did, it worked. That one worked. But uh, yeah, um, lackluster year. Lackluster. That's a um, shame. Halftime show. Okay. We could have no. told you a cold play. We did. Oh, wait, we did tell we you did cold play to... was not going to be good. Yeah. I mean, come on, people. It it just was also lackluster. Well, they better do better next year, and they better listen to us. I will say the one exciting thing, though. Yeah. Before we close out, I did win fifty bucks at the end of the third quarter. You did. So I had a successful Super Bowl. Are you saying you gambled? I gambled. On what? We play a square game, Aww. and I had the right scores. Is this at the a Lagana family square game? No, no, no. This is um, with some old friends from high school at a Mayo house. Go Mayo! Oh, that's right, because you were visiting friends in Mayo. Well, right. shout out to Mayo, and do better next time, NFL. <laughs> that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode and archive episodes online anytime on Facebook, YouTube, or Google Plus by simply searching Arundel TV. Please tune in again next week with more highlights and news from around the county, and we'll see you next time.